myself and my friends went to see The Searchers at the Criterion Theater uptown. We had just graduated that, that day from parochial school, the eighth grade. And I guess we were 12 or 13 years old. And uh, we treated ourselves to go see The Searchers. We came in in the middle, which was the usual at the time. You'd come in the middle and you'd watch the beginning again. And there it was in VistaVision, you know, this extraordinary movie. And don't forget, we had grown up on Fort Apache. She wore a yellow ribbon, Rio Grande, uh, the kindly John Wayne character. And, but here was 1956, the repression of the 50s, and things were happening. The movie business was changing. What you can say in a movie was changing, too. And you had Stanley Kramer making certain kinds of very socially conscious films. Uh, you had Kazan doing that, too, in the late 40s, early 50s. Um, and then you had, of course, Otto Preminger breaking everything, which was fantastic. The Moon is Blue was the first, but then there was the incredible uh, uh, Man with the Golden Arm and all, the, all these sorts of things that were coming out. Uh, uh, at the same time, United Artists were making these strange films, too, like The Big Knife and Kiss Me Deadly, or like The Great One, A Sweet Smell of Success, which is one of the best films ever made. And uh, it's coming out, and it shows this under, underbelly of the American psyche, in a way, at that time. You know, uh, journalists, uh, a journalist or a gossip columnist who had such power were coming out of the McCarthy era. And how, what happens? You go see a Western directed by John Ford, whom by that time I kind of figured out was this terrific director, and John Wayne in it. And by that time, I put the two names together when they were both on a film. It was really very interesting for boys, particularly. And you, you sit there, and suddenly, this character, this lonely character, comes out of the, out of the desert or something, and uh, uh, he's absolutely terrifying. I mean, he's filled with all, well, he's filled with, he, he just literally um, acts out the racism, the worst aspects of racism of our country, you know, and it's right there. It's right there, and you could see the hate. You could see it building. You could also understand how he could go that way. doesn't mean it's the old story, that Travis has a fantasy. What makes him crazy and what makes another person not crazy is that Travis acts it out. They say, so this man is acting it out, and he becomes obsessive, like that extraordinary scene and they're sitting there, they're st sitting on their horses in the birch trees and the snow is coming down. He says, we'll find them, as uh, sure as the turning of the earth. It's like, and he's a poet, you see. He's a poet, too. He's a poet of hatred, you know. And he just shows us the worst part of ourselves that's coming out of the late 40s, early 50s. He just brings it right up to the surface, um, so we have to deal with it. You really get his character in the moment when, uh, when they unearth a, a grave of a, a dead Indian. And... Um, and there's some disagreement they're discussing, they're arguing, and suddenly John Wayne says, John Wayne says, uh, Ethan Edwards says, let's finish the job, do it right. And he twirls out his gun and fires twice, shooting out the eyes of the dead Indian. And he says if he has no eyes, he can't go to the happy hunting ground, so he'll be a wanderer through, within the winds for the rest of his life. Uh, so in a sense, what he's doing, he hates so much that he hates beyond the grave, that he doesn't want to give him the peace of his paradise. You know, he wants to kill the soul of, of these people. Why? You know? And he envies so much the soul that the young man has, Jeffrey Hunter. He just envies it so much. And there's this wonderful, there's this wonderful kind of love between the two of them, which of course comes, which of course brings out the line all the time, that'll be the day. It always, it always winds up with that. There's these lovable parts of this character, of Ethan Edwards, and that's why when we were there, 13 years old, watching John Wayne like that, uh, it was quite a shock.